Good evening. Welcome to Sewing to Bourbon. I'm Glenn. This is Charlie, as usual, coming to you from Charlie's Basement. Tonight, we have a special episode that I've been really excited about. And we're going we're gonna to just kind of start it off with a quote from Ernest Hemingway, one of my favorites. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm totally ready. And it says, an intelligent man is sometimes forced to be drunk to spend time with his fools. I feel which attacked. Which is exactly why I drink whenever I'm with Charlie. I feel attacked. I see what he did there. He didn't tell me what quote he was going to use and he pulled that one out. And that's nonsense. But I'll take it. So whatever we have to do. What are we drinking tonight, Glenn? Tonight, Charlie, we are drinking a brand new rye whiskey. It's called Hemingway Rye. And I'm gonna attempt to flip this around. This is a first edition uh, oh, like rye a book. whiskey. Like yes. a book. Uh, a first I see edition, what they did there. Just like a book. And okay. as you can see, it's packaged to look like a book. It, it's, viewers, you can see it, it's gorgeous. The presentation, Chef's kiss. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll get into that a little bit more once we start opening it up. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the the background of this whiskey. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do. So uh, a man named Steve Groth, mm -hmm. or Groth, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that, but he used to be with Angel's Envy. He no longer is. Um, partnered up with Ron Call, who's a longtime master distiller, and they started a, a rum company. They started distilling rum. And as a tribute to Ernest Hemingway, they named this rum Papa's Pilar. After his boat, correct? After his boat. And his wife. Oh, that yeah. was his wife's name. Yeah. Yes. So this rye whiskey, um, they teamed up once again. So Steve and, and his two sons teamed up with Ron Call and his two sons. Oh, family affair. To create this rye whiskey. And they call it Hemingway Rye. Now this, like I said before, is the first edition. Um, only 972 of these bottles were produced as a collector's set. Now, obviously they're gonna continue to produce this, uh, this whiskey. But not a future. first edition. Not a first edition and not packaged like this. So. We were lucky enough to get our hands on one, actually on two, which is why we're actually give away our secrets. <laughs> which is why we're actually drinking this tonight. So we're gonna we're gonna you know try this out and maybe store one away for the future. Absolutely. So what we're opening tonight is a blend of nine-year-old Indiana straight rye whiskey and four-year-old Kentucky rye whiskey. It's about a 94 nine-year, six percent four-year. So nine years old, if you know anything about rye, if you're rye drinkers, you know rye age, uh, you know, uh, they mature more rapidly yes. than a bourbon. So a nine year old rye is going to have a lot of complexity and uh, that's uh, the vast majority of what's in this bottle. Yeah, nine years is a pretty decent amount of time for rye to, to sit in a barrel. And what I failed to, to say a minute ago, the connection to the rum is this, this rye is finished in rum seasoned Oloroso sherry casks. So the Papa's Pilar rum is finished in a sherry cask and this is finished in so that sherry cask. It's, so we've got some sherry aspect to it. So that kind of wine forward. And then we've got the rum profile that should come through along with some nine-year-old Indiana rye whiskey and some four-year-old Kentucky rye whiskey. The, the, the promises are in. Should here. be very interesting. So Charlie, why don't you, I'm gonna let you since you have gigantic hands and you're less likely to drop this. Um, I'm gonna let you open this up and we'll kind of talk about so what's in the what's The presentation the is incredible. First edition, it looks like a rich leather bound book. Like if you had this, your home would smell of rich mahogany. <laughs> um, I love the little bookmark that kind of hangs out that serves dual purpose. It does come with a registration tag for you to, and, and detail about all about it. I'm gonna set this down to do this part. Uh, Glenn did a really cool unboxing video on TikTok and on our Facebook page, so you can check that out. But in terms of bottles, that is one of the most beautiful bottles that I have seen. I mean, it is incredible. Glenn, you wanna walk us through some of the detail on that bottle? Yeah, so this may be the coolest bottle 
as far as presentation that I've ever bought. It just The bottle itself is beautifully shaped. Um, it's got these raised metal, um, I don't even know what you would call, I'll call them buttons that they're, spell out they're, dry. They're uh, typewriter buttons yep. for oh, that's Papa what they are. Gosh, that's why you're here, Charlie. That's why I'm here, baby. And it, it's, it's signed by Ron Call and uh, Jacob and what's the other son's name? Flip that thing around and show them the coolest yeah. feature. Coolest thing here is it has a little slot here with a library card. So, so cool. You can use that to write down your tasting notes or you can, whenever you pull it out and have a, a pour with yeah. someone, maybe you write down their name and Date keep shared with, you drank it with. Yeah. Man, that's just, that's so cool. And, and little details like that on a bottle um, it's just, you, you just don't see that much. It's be yeah. The presentation is incredible. And it's like I said in my unboxing video, it's kind of gimmicky, but I'll, it's pretty cool actually, if you ask me. And then it's got a, a QR code on the back as well. So um, you can scan the code, it takes you to their website and you register your bottle. So each bottle is numbered. This is number 475 oh. out of 972. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm ready to Are crack we doing this, this baby let's, open. Let's do this. Uh, Glenn? Glenn did not prepare and take the plastic off the bottle. No, I'm gonna let Charlie that, do that because okay. he's so efficient. You we just may got, just edit this out. No, nah, we're not editing it. I got it. First try. There you I'm go. gonna let you make it pop, sir. Good job. I will make it pop, I hope. Get out of here. While he's doing that. Uh, Ooh, that was a good one. While he's doing that and pouring, I'm gonna read my favorite for this Hemingway quote. I have drunk since I was 15, and few things have given me more pleasure. When you work hard all day with your head and you must work again the next day, what else can change your ideas and make them run on a different plane than whiskey? True words have maybe never been spoken. Oh, I'm so excited. And that is why Ernest Hemingway. Complicated guy, that Hemingway. Is, uh, an iconic American legend, right? Yeah, absolutely. And writer. Let's all right. Uh, Take a look at this. It's a kind of a, a dark amber honey color. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's more transparent than I thought it would mm -hmm. be in the bottle. So, but kind of a nice light color. Um, clings to the glass. What proof is this, Glenn? Hundred proof. Yeah, nice 100 legs. Hundred proof. Nice legs. Um, definitely clings to the glass. I can't wait to nose this. I don't know what that is? Oh, okay. Big blast of like spearmint or mint. Yeah, I get a little mint. Um, but it's counteracted with some fruitiness. Really, really, really interesting nose yeah, on that. There's definitely some some type of fruit. I don't know if it's uh, maybe like a, I don't know, raisin I, or a grape. Yeah. Or, I, but not, it, it, it's not overpowering. No, it, it's just there over the uh mm -hmm. over that kind of minty bomb that kind of hits you on the front but really nice it does have a little little alcohol a little ethanol mm -hmm. on the nose a little bit but nothing over crazy overpowering all right let's get to sipping let's check her out cheers Would you like to go first? That's, um, it's very interesting. Uh, the mint mm -hmm. comes through first. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting some burn. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little burn on this, um, which is to be expected with a, with a rye. Yeah, spice. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah. It's lingering. Um, pepper. A little fruit you can I, it's it's got the i think some of the dryness is coming through from the from, from the, the sherry. sherry uh you go you tell me what, what? i i get um i get that kind of bitter rum mm -hmm. kind of finish on the end of it um it's really interesting because it starts as it it starts full forward like you're drinking a rye here's your rye right kind of minty and spicy and baking spice and then it kind of has kind of a, a middle um, where you kind of get some of that dryness and some of the sherry, 
but then the finish is very much like a like a really rich Barbados rum. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of again, sort of a dry finish and um, not great on my rum flavors, but that <laughs> that kind of like burnt brown sugar, right? Um, you know, kind of just real real rummy. <laughs> it's real rummy. Real rummy. But it's but, it's very. I mean, it's it's super unique. Yeah, it, it's. Definitely, it's still lingering. My yeah. first sip is still lingering as you speak, and as it has kind of rested on my palate, um, some of the the uh, a chocolate note is coming mm -hmm. through. I'm gonna have another sip and see how it goes on the second sip. On my second sip, I get less of the rye, mm -hmm. and I get a lot more of that more rum kind of finished and more rum forward. Um, I would agree with you 100% on that. Yeah. It definitely did not have that. And obviously your first drink. Yeah, of, kind of waking up the, the yeah. waking up the palate and you're gonna hit different mm -hmm. taste buds. But I also find that it calmed down after I'd had that first sip mm -hmm. that I don't get as much of the baking spice now and I don't get hardly any of the burn. And now it's a very mellow, very smooth. It's it's nice. It's complex. Yeah, I, I it lights up every part of your tongue. Um, I feel it in my throat. I feel it in my chest. Mm -hmm. Still, it's got that gives you that Kentucky hug or Indiana hug or yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's very interesting. It's not as sweet as I thought it. Would yeah, be. It, and I think that's a. I think that's counteracted by the rye and the mm -hmm. age of the rye, because a lot most nine-year-old ryes, you're not going to get a lot of sweetness right. on those. You're just going to get that big baking spice and some of that mint. So I think that was probably a choice of them to age it in mm -hmm. a rum cask that was originally a sherry cask to try to give it some more complexity and flavor. But um, mission accomplished. Like it's it's a very very unique. I I have had more sherry cask bourbon than than I can mention and, and I love it it's one of my favorite finishes um, they're very unique and they're they're different sherry cask I have had a ton of rum finished bourbons this is neither Th this is kind of in a category all itself um, it, it is more rum forward than any rum that I have rum finished than I have ever had mm -hmm. um, but not in a bad way and, yeah. and it's really on the finish that you get the rum I would yeah I would definitely agree with that it doesn't it doesn't hit you right up front with the rum yeah. or the sherry, honestly, other than the dryness. Right. I think. But really, I mean, a really unique bottle. And, and we, we have talked about this many times. We've done many episodes on unique bottles and unique finishes. A bottle like this, in this presentation, with this backstory, with everything that it is, the one thing you want it to be is unique. You do not want this to be like, oh, this tastes exactly like that or oh this is very familiar you want it to be something that you're like you've got to taste this and this may not be for everyone like this is a finished bourbon drinkers bourbon here yes and because, we, we know very well that yes some people do not like finished bourbon or finished rye in this right. case but this is what is interesting to me is the unique flavors and the unique just nose and, and it characters that you can get out of finishing things and, and the the kind of mad scientry, I don't think that's a word, but mad, mad scientist science. aspect of it and wizardry that people are doing and experimenting in whiskeys now is awesome. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a keeper, I think. Um, and don't worry, no, you can't get your hands on this collector's bottle because they're sold out but you will be able to get your hands on this whiskey. Yeah. You know, um, part of our doing episodes is we do things that A, we think are cool, and B, we want to drink. And I think that's, if there is ever a theme for our episodes and, and so into bourbon, it's get out of your comfort zone, buy that cool looking bottle or that bottle that's, you know, like, what are they finishing that in? What mm -hmm. is this? What is this a mix of? And try it and see kind of what's out there because there's some really cool, really unique things that are out there. Love it or hate it, it it's going to stimulate your profile in a way that you will feel some sort yes. of way about it. That's, and that's one of the things we enjoy. I know Absolutely. you and I are similar on this. We, we like to be challenged yeah. by a whiskey. Um, and 
a lot of there's a lot of whiskeys, bourbons out there that are they're good, but they're very safe. Yeah, they're you know you know what you're getting. You're not gonna it's not yeah. gonna challenge your palate, and that's fine. But we enjoy trying things that are a little bit different, and I think this one hits the mark. I think they've, yeah. they've done a, a good job yeah, here. This is, th this yeah. is a really great offering and, and a really great initial offering from uh, from Hemingway. Uh, what, what was the MSRP on this, if you don't mind me asking? One forty nine ninety nine was the MSRP on this. I, I was expecting two forty nine yeah. or more with the presentation for what this is. I mean, it, uh, it again, a lot of money. I mean, one hundred and fifty dollars for a bottle, uh, but. God, so worth it. I mean, yeah. the presentation and the story that you'll be able to tell your guests and, and enjoying it. Yeah. And normally I would be a little leery of spending $150 on a brand new whiskey that, you know, it's just starting out, you know, nothing about it. But with this one, with the lineage and the, <laughs> the heritage of yeah. the, the master distillers and, you know, I, I, I wasn't to yeah, leery hesitant about, about that yeah and the, plus it's just really cool yeah and, and the, anytime you can have a first edition of anything it's it's a good opportunity this is not a bottle that you will drink in a weekend no. or even a month this is a bottle that will hang out on your bar for a year and you're going to drink it it's a special occasion bottle uh it's a bottle where you're like oh i haven't opened that in a while or you have a friend over and you want to tell them about it so when you really break it down like that you're going to get months of enjoyment out of it i mean it, it really is I mean, it's still a lot of money to pay for brown water, but so worth it. So I worth agree. It. I agree. We're gonna we're gonna drink this one, right? Oh, this is a. <laughs> the, are, are we drink drink it or sink drink it? Drink it or sink it. We're not gonna sink it. No, because we're not it's sinking Named it. after a boat. That's right. That's <laughs> no, right. it's not named after a boat. Well, the, the rum, the rum was. After a boat. But uh, trivia: Do you know what uh, Ernest Ernest Hemingway's uh, most popular uh, novel is? His most popular novel. The Old Man in the Sea. It is The Old Man in the <laughs> Sea. Do you know why? Because it's the shortest. 100% <laughs> accurate. So yeah. Ernest Hemingway, awesome dude. You should do some research if you haven't because he was, uh, he was a dude. But this, uh, the Hemingway offering, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely. Are we, are we finished here tonight, Charlie? Do we have anything else to add? Do you have any more Hemingway quotes to make fun of me? I'm sure you have one more. <laughs> Well, go ahead. No, not to it, make fun of you. I wish I did. Isn't there one that says your friend Charlie's an idiot? <laughs> Code Ernest Hemingway. There is one I would like to leave our audience with. Leave us with, make it good. First of all, let's encourage everyone to go to Sew in the Bourbon on Instagram, on Facebook, and check out Whiskey Realtor on TikTok. If like you, and subscribe as well, please. Absolutely. And having said that, we're going to leave you with this. Always do sober what you said you would do drunk. Do you know why? Why? Because that'll keep you to teach. <laughs> that will teach you to keep your mouth shut. That'll keep you to teach your mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Ernest. Words anyway. to live by. And as always, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. And we're back in the basement, and we're gonna drink some bourbon and some rice. Da -da 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 -da. Just remember to keep your underwear tight. Da, 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 da. That food smells so good, it's gonna be really hard for me to concentrate. Stroganoff, man. Love stroganoff. I'm sure you do. <sighs> I see what you did in there. Hemingway rye. Rye. Rye, rye whiskey. Rye not. Papa's Pilar. 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 Hemingway. Pilar.